you give me the goddamn respect you would damn well want yourself, or I will kick your black ass. You. Now, out of all of the times I've watched this film when I was younger, I never realized that this movie had a lot of funny moments. This movie is actually hilarious now in my big age. Joe Clark was not to be played with, and baby, he came into Eastside High on a mission. And while his methods were a bit harsh and his ego sometimes was on 10.5, he did what needed to be done because clearly those teachers were not equipped for the task at hand. As always, you know I have my thoughts, so let's get into it. So the movie opens up to Joe Clark teaching at Eastside High back in his glory days. This scene really shows how good of an actor Morgan is. He embodies the subtle body language of a teacher, walking down the aisles, making sure to give attention to each student as he passes by. Even the way he talks is just spot on. So one of his colleagues alerts him and they are holding a union meeting without him and Joe wants to smoke. He crashes the meeting and demands to know what is going on. Turns out that because of his antics, they have all agreed to accept raises and transfer him to another school. Joe is upset and completely over it, but before he leaves, he gives them a warning about what's to come. Joe! They can go to hell. Come on, Joe! This place deserves exactly what it gets. Then we swiftly see the school transition to present day, and baby, it's looking like something out of a horror film. Graffiti everywhere. We got kids fighting, girls jumping other girls in the bathroom, and straight up assaulting this poor girl. Child, they're throwing toilets out the bathroom window. We got drug dealers not only coming to the school, but going into the school. <laughs> Baby, where's the coaches at? Security guards. These kids are dealing and doing hardcore drugs on school time. They even beating up the teachers. I mean, they straight up whooped his ass. Baby, after that, I'm pulling my pension, my 401k, and I'm taking a long break. I know for a fact they ain't paying him enough for this. They done stuffed this poor kid in a locker, and nobody cares, especially not this guy, and I know he heard him. And this is just the opening credits. Lord help us. We go to Frank, who is currently talking to the mayor about the current status of Eastside High. Turns out that the school is in danger of being taken over by the state if the school fails the basic skills test. So Frank ends up suggesting that Joe Clark be considered to be principal there, and Frank believes that he has what it takes to turn the school around. The mayor does not want to deal with Joe, but even he knows that he is their only shot. So Frank goes to meet Joe at his current school and tells him that they would like for him to be the principal of Eastside High to help them turn the school around and get a passing score. All this time I've been stuck down here and you come and ask me now, Frank. I'm not a miracle worker, Joe. So Frank tells Joe that this will be a chance to do some good, but Joe sees right through him and tells him he's only trying to save his own ass. Frank and Joe have this type of bond with each other they are always calling each other out on their shit, but in the best way possible, at least for them. You want the truth, Joe? Yeah, Frank. Let's have some truth. For nothing but an insignificant man. It's like you were never born. Your life hasn't made one bit of difference. And neither is mine. So I guess he got through to him because soon after Joe takes the position, baby, Joe shows up in his cleanest three-piece suit, looking first Sunday fly. He is first pew ready, okay? And he is shocked at the current state of the school. He later attends a meeting with the current staff and teachers of Eastside High. They try to butter him up and attempt to provide him a list of things that need his attention, but he quickly shuts that shit down. Uh, Mr. Sorella, for example. You may sit down, Mr. O'Malley. He quickly establishes his authority and lets them know that he's there for a reason. The main one being that they don't know what they're doing, clearly. 
these students are straight up terrorizing them. Joe asks for a list of every student who has been causing trouble, dealing drugs, and or failing. I never noticed Candyman in the corner. He, he's supposed to be a Cabrini Green. <laughs> but anyway, and then this guy. Child, I can't escape. Look, he ain't never up to no good. Only one boss in this place, and that's me. The H-N-I-C. The H-N-I-C? The head nigga in charge. So we go to the assembly, and these kids are just a hot mess. This has to be the most stressful environment for everybody. So Mr. Clock shows up and walks up to the front of the stage and it seems like there's a struggle to get the kids handled. But how quickly that changes when he lets the students on the stage know that since they don't wanna do well in school, since they don't wanna, they wanna do or sell drugs, and since they wanna be disruptive, that they can get out of his school. Now, I stand by this decision. These kids are causing chaos, and honestly, why are you here? You're not trying to learn, you're doing other things, you are just there to be there. Go home, like, we can't make you one better, and you causing trouble for the ones that really want it. So, bye. <laughs> and baby, after this, everybody sees that Mr. Clark means business, and the energy quickly shifts. Do all of you understand me? Then welcome to the new East Side High. Baby, that school ain't never been that quiet. So after all this, the parents of the students who were kicked out called an emergency meeting. And baby, these parents are offering all types of excuses, especially this one. Our kids don't deserve this. Some of those children are smart. They're just discouraged about what chances they got out there. Them. Girl. But then Joe gets up and quickly gets them together. One bad apple spoils a bunch. Well, what about 300? Rotten to the core. Joe lets them know that his focus isn't on the 300 troublemakers, but on the ones who truly want to succeed. He then goes on to tell them that he has the true purpose to turn East Side around and he will do so by any means necessary. And I gave my word to God. And that's why I threw those bastards out. And that's all I'm gonna say. Baby, why did Mr. Clock show up in the cut list? Child, in another three piece suit. Anyway, Joe sees Sam sitting on the front steps and Sam tells Joe that he made a mistake kicking him out. Joe looks his name up and quickly pulls his card. What's your name, son? Sam, Thomas Sam. Thomas Sam, Thomas Sam. You're a freshman? Yes, sir. Cutting class and smoking crack, Mr. Sam, there's no mistake. Joe takes him up to the roof of the school to talk to him. He learns his father isn't in his life and that his mother doesn't even know he was kicked out of school. Sam's is persistent about getting back into school, but Joe needs a little bit more convincing. Go on, jump! No, I don't want to jump. Yes, you do! You smoke crack, don't you? Look at me, boy! Don't you smoke crack! He proceeds to tell him to jump since he cares so little about his life. Eventually, he lets him back into school but vows to stay on his ass the entire time. Later, Joe goes to the cafeteria to check on the students. I loved how attentive he was to each one of his students. Do we even have people like this in schools anymore? He naturally encourages his students and even rags on this guy and gets them caught up. Didn't I just see you downstairs with your arms around Clarice? Clarice, you hung out with that skis? No, check it out, check it out, check it out. It was only one time. One time. He's trying to hear me. Joe catches Sam sneaking food off of Kanisha's plate and then tells him and his boys to get up and sing a school song. They do a piss poor job and of course, Joe gathers Sam's. He then tells the whole student body that they must learn the school song or face suspension. He is so serious about this that he goes to the music teacher's class and tells her that she must teach all the students the school song. She agrees and then quickly goes back to teaching her students and Joe takes offense. He tells her to step outside and it quickly turns into a war of egos. 
ending with Miss Elliot getting fired for basically standing up for herself. He was wrong here. You need a psychiatrist. Get out! Right now! Fine, fine, fired, fired! You will hear from my lawyer! Then we go to Mr. Darnell, aka Miles, aka John, waiting to excel. He basically demands for Joe to respect him and to basically stop fucking with him. <laughs> he was not going for it. You give me the goddamn respect you would damn well want yourself, or I will kick your black ass! You Baby, Joe is on a roll today. He is just being a tyrant. Doing all this before the practice test, which is the next day. So we fast forward to the test and the kids are struggling. We got one kid looking at Playboy Max instead of taking the test. Another falling asleep and another who simply does not stand a chance. Later on after the test, Joe gets called to stop a fight between two students. Turns out one of the students who was kicked out came back into the school to jump another student. Joe instantly shuts shit down and calls for locks to be placed on all the doors in order to keep the kids safe and keep the troublemakers out. We then go to Kanisha who is looking sad and sitting outside the office. Joe spots her and talks with her and finds out that she's having problems at home. He calls for one of the teachers to pull up her info so that they can contact her mom and talk with her. They later end up going to her house to talk to her mom to get a better understanding of what's going on. Why is her mama looking every bit of 17? She looks almost as young as her daughter. And at a second glance, I recognize his face. I'm still mad about Lovecraft Country, y'all. Oh my God. But anyway, Kanisha's mom, and she starts to tell them how she had Kanisha young and she stopped working to take care of her. And as she got older, she's looking to start back. Plus, she had issues with drugs, and now that she's clean, she doesn't like herself. Or maybe she is, you know, still upset with herself and doesn't want Kanisha to see her in her current state. She thinks she will be better off with someone else who doesn't have her problems. But Joe convinces her to try and that he will help her find a job and get back on her feet. As tough and sometimes irrational as Joe can be, he still has a great heart and cares deeply about his students. So fast forward to Joe meeting back up with Frank. Lord, why did this man make this comment? Is that all about chains on the doors? Don't you people didn't like chains? Frank shows Joe a newspaper article that calls Joe Crazy Joe Clark and suggests that he fights with parents and that he is basically being a tyrant. Child, we got the fire chief complaining about the locks on the doors and the union lawyers threatening a walkout. It's a complete mess. The fact is you're screwing up. You're alienating everybody. But you are not taking care of business. This shit you're pulling now, you just gone plain loco. Now Frank tells him exactly where he's fucking up to, including why and how he lost his wife, why he was wrong to fire both Miss Elliot and Darnell, and demands that he apologize and reinstate their positions immediately, and even gives him a quick reminder, you know, just in case he forgot. You're so hot on discipline that goddammit, start by accepting mine, cause contrary to popular opinion, I'm the head nigger in charge. Come on, let's get something to eat. You really think you're bad, don't you? Oh, he is. I think Frank is the only one that can swiftly get Joe together. So we go to the school where the fire chief, along with reporters, are in front of the school giving Joe the business. Joe isn't bothered though and tells them to mind their business and come back when they have an official request for inspection. He runs into Ray and tries to talk some sense into him. He knows that Ray is selling drugs on the side. Ray tells him that he's dropping out of school and Joe tells him that he's going to be dead in a year. But this doesn't move him and he still leaves. You can tell this really hurt Joe because he knew the outcome wasn't going to be good and there was nothing he could do about it. We then go to Sam's and his crew walking down the hall. They make a quick run into the bathroom without Sam's noticing. And when Sam's tries to go into the bathroom, he gets caught by Mr. Clark. He tries to get Mr. Clark off his tail, but Joe is on to him. 
He tells him to go into the bathroom and then he sees his crew chilling like they ain't got no classes to attend. He tells them that since they are in the bathroom goofing off, they should know the school's song by now and demands they sing it for him. And if they don't sing it right, they will be suspended. So they start off and it's a little shaky at first, but it quickly turns around and baby Joe is shook. By the side, we'll stay. And why was he pretending to sing? Wasn't doing that a damn thing. <laughs> Here go my part, y'all. So Joe demands to know who changed up the school song. The boys are reluctant to tell him at first, but eventually let him know that it was one of the music teachers, Mrs. Powers. So Joe rushes them to their class and demands to know if she in fact changed the school song. Initially, it seems that he is on one of his power trips, but no, he actually loves the new school song and lets her know that he wants the students to learn the new version in English and in Spanish. I had to do it one more time. Y'all know y'all was singing it too. Don't even trip. Joe is on a high, walking down the hallway, actually speaking to the teachers, and everyone is kind of surprised. But as soon as he gets into a good mood, he walks into the office and is given the lackluster results from the practice test. And he's on one, once again. So Joe holds a meeting with all the teachers. He is pissed about the test results, and he sets up a plan to improve the scores. He demands the teacher set up a student tutoring program and remedial reading on Saturdays. And to get the students involved, he tells the teachers to go to their homes and talk to their folks. To get the students where they need to be, it has to be an all-hands effort and everyone has to get involved. 70% of the students fail the practice test and he tells the teachers that they shoulder the blame and that due to their inability to get the students where they need to be, Eventually, the students will end up on the wrong side of the law due to their lack of options. Honestly, these teachers were dealing with a lot. They have to teach all these students. This includes the ones who are willing to learn and the ones who aren't and being distracting to those who do want to learn. They have to monitor the school, make sure no bad apples get in and deal with this, you know, his demanding ass all at the same time. I don't think they weren't trying. But there were a lot of factors that Joe wasn't considering at this point. So we get a montage of the teachers helping out the students, tutoring, getting the students more involved in the school. This guy's actually doing a great job for once. Kanisha and her mom are doing better and she even has her eyes on a boy. Things are going well. So we fast forward to this hater. You know, she's still mad at Joe telling the mayor that he hasn't gotten the students to pass the practice test and that he still has locks on the doors. She's still in her feelings. She tells the mayor that she wants Joe out and that if the mayor doesn't do what she wants, that she will organize and make sure that he doesn't get reelected. So they come up with a plan to catch Joe with the locks on the doors so that they can get him arrested and get him out of there. I got some thoughts on this lady. I will get her together at the end. But for right now, all I'm going to say is she should put more focus on her kid and maybe she wouldn't have to do all this. After their talk, the mayor and the fire chief are in the bathroom talking about Joe and the lady and they basically want to catch two birds with one stone. They want to satisfy her and make sure that he remains the mayor and they also plan to catch Joe slipping with the chains on the doors so that they can get rid of him. They could give two shits about them kids and the parents. But anyway, Rosenberg ends up overhearing all of this and him and Frank pay Joe a visit to give him a heads up. Joe then holds a meeting with the teachers and other staff to make a plan for when the fire chief comes. After the meeting, Miss Levias tries to get his attention and he shouts at her, basically telling her that he will get to her when he gets to her and that was the straw that broke the camera's back. Instead of him telling her, hey, I've got a lot going on at the moment, I'll get to you before the end of the day, he yells at her telling her that she should be able to do something without him for once, like he's doing everything on his own. 
So later she sees him in the hallway and offers him a piece of her mind. She demands to be transferred to another school because she has had enough of Joe and his ego. I have done everything, everything I, possible to get to the teachers get a date. It is always I. There are 300 teachers on the faculty here. You do not do it all alone. She then goes on to tell him that he is not in this fight alone and he should stop acting like it. He's been more worried about cleaning up the school and standing on their necks versus working with them and supporting them. He's in danger of losing the teachers that actually care and are in the fight with him. You are thoughtless and cruel and it hurts and none of them deserve it. They are sick of it and so am I. So we go to the auditorium where they are having another assembly and Joe walks in and passes Miss Levias a letter of recommendation so that she can transfer. She doesn't seem too happy about it. I don't think she truly wanted to transfer. I think she was just angry at the moment. But he goes on stage to encourage and hype up the students to take the test. He even gives Miss Levias props for making him realize the error of his ways and making him realize where he needed to improve. He ends the assembly with a rendition of Lean On Me, sung by Mrs. Powers, to further encourage the students and get them motivated for the test. During this, Miss Levias balls up the recommendation and decides this is where she needs and wants to be. And of course, this lady is still bothered, you know, still mad that they haven't gotten Joe. She's more passionate about getting him than being concerned about those kids. It's ego versus ego at this point. We then go to Kanisha, and Kanisha has found herself in a bad position. Turns out that she's pregnant and terrified, but Joe reassures her that they will meet with her mother and together they will figure out what's best for her. And in the midst of all of this, Candyman comes in and tells Joe that the fire chief got past the gate and has officially caught them with the locks on the doors. And this one is so happy about it. Just bitter for no reason. They even recorded this man when he was yelling over the radio. Again, what is her motivation here? Even the kids know she on some BS. Shut up! You're finished! The school board's gonna hear this at 7 o'clock and we are gonna vote your black ass out. No, bitch! Vote on this! Sam, just Child, Joe Clark in these three-piece suits. Just clean for no reason. We go to Joe in a jail cell. Frank and Rosenberg are heading off to the school board meeting, but before they go, Frank tells Joe that he has accomplished far more than what was expected and he did a great job with Eastside. We then go to the board meeting. This time, the parents are not seeing it for Miss Ma'am. They can sense the hate, I guess. At one point, do you look at things for what they are? You've seen this man basically shift this school into something great all while you did nothing but complain. But instead of giving him props or even offering constructive criticism, you choose to tear him down because he hurt your feelings. Girl, sit your hating ass down. Anyway, while this is happening, the kids have decided to go to the mayor's office and fight for the release of Mr. Clark. And of course, the mayor is notified and realizes he needs to settle this as quickly as possible. He goes down and talks to Joe, but Joe is not feeling it. Now they're very emotional. They're, they're, they're all jacked up. You have to send them home. I don't have to do nothing but stay black and die. So this hater goes out to speak to them. And honestly, I don't know what gave her the idea that she was going to get through to them. Now let's just settle down. Give her a chance to talk. She might actually have something to say. So everybody just chill. Settle down. And let's listen to the old loud mouth wench. Child, he disrespected her respectfully, <laughs> okay? So all the kids take turns speaking up for Mr. Clark and baby, when Kanisha's future baby's father decided to speak, she swiftly got him together. What you don't understand is that Mr. Clark believes in us. He provided an He doesn't believe in you because you don't take care of your responsibility. So the hater goes on to say that they will give them what their school deserves, a good principal, that's cool, but the work has already been done. What more can a new principal do? If anything, the school will go back down. The students are not trying to hear anything she has to say, so the mayor urges for Mr. Clark to come and speak to the students. 
So while Mr. Clark is trying to calm down the student, they refuse to back down and want him to get justice. And in the midst of all this, Ms. Levias comes up to deliver the test scores. Turns out the students passed the test and now the number one hater has an egg on her face. Then Joe calls the mayor down and the mayor really thought he was going to receive some sort of thanks or props or an ounce of respect. Child. And on behalf of the students of Eastside High, you can tell the state to go to hell. Soundstripe. The students start singing the school song and of course in 90s fashion we get a feel good freeze frame ending. And that's the end of the movie. So here are my final thoughts. <laughs> so Joe had a bit of an ego, obviously, but he did know what he was doing when it came to those kids. Eastside High was struggling, mainly because there was no structure and no repercussions for anything. Those kids ran the school and terrorized everyone. It wasn't until Joe came and put his foot down and showed them that he wasn't gonna play with their ass that they decided to act like they had some sense. Was his method sometimes a bit harsh, especially with the teachers? Absolutely, but it worked. Though I think we can all agree that he didn't have to go so hard on those teachers. He could have been a bit kinder and collaborative, but like the students, he brought the best out of them as well. Joe was able to offer structure, give those kids hope, encouragement, support, he made sure they felt heard, offered guidance, and redirection when they weren't doing their best or acting up. He was like a parent to many of those kids. He did what needed to be done. He didn't offer excuses or take excuses. He simply got in there and did the job. Unlike this lady. I didn't even say her name during this review because honestly, she had me hot the entire time. This school been down bad for how many years? And on this dude's first day on the job, you want to holler about the kids and how they're so hopeless about the future? Girl, where is your plan? First day, Joe came in that school with a plan. This is where we need to be, and this is what we're going to do to get there. You just spewing out a bunch of excuses for these kids to internalize and use as reasons to not even try. Just stupid. And she became so hyper-focused on getting Joe back for basically bruising her little ego, she couldn't see all the good that he was doing. She was worried about locks on doors. Meanwhile, Joe got the teachers and the students involved. What has she been doing the, the whole time? Not a damn thing. We have all known a Joe Clark, and he's probably still one of your favorite people from childhood or your school years. We need more Joe Clarks in schools, but really we need principals, teachers, and staff to get paid with their work. You can't have quality if you're not willing to pay for it, and you can't go pulling any and everybody into a school and giving them teaching positions. It's not for everyone. And if anyone viewing this video is a teacher, let me tell you that you are so appreciated and so needed. Anyway, as always, I thank you for watching this video. I would also like to thank everyone for subscribing, commenting, and liking my content. I am just in awe of the support I've been receiving, and I want y'all to know that I appreciate you. I wish for everyone to have a great new year. May 2023 be fruitful as stress-free as possible. May you be in good health and protected from anything and anyone who does not have good intentions period. See you next time, you guys. Bye.